So you've got fundraising questions? Well, I've got answers. Welcome to this episode of Jim and Java. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to this next episode of Jim and Java. Let's jump right in with a question. First question we have is from Kurt in Des Moines, Iowa. Kurt asks, I'm having trouble getting an appointment with a business person to ask them for money. Any suggestions? Well, Kurt, great question. Uh, I've been in that position many times. I've had to uh, find creative ways to try and get in to meet someone and to get an appointment with someone. First of all, I'd recommend doing your homework. It's always important to find out a little bit about the person, find out uh, their background, where they work, what they're involved in, and uh, their friends, the activities, relationships, and things that they've got, because that may be one of your best ways to get to a person is through another person. Our last episode, we talked a little bit about the importance of referrals and using referrals to get in, and that can be a very powerful and important way for you to get an appointment. Uh, if you've got a phone number for a person, if that's a personal number, then you may be running into the challenge that many of us face these days is that you just are simply getting voicemails and that happens quite often. So if it's a cell phone or at, at a home, uh, many times people don't even have uh, voicemails at, uh, or uh, landlines anymore like we used to at home and uh, if they do have a landline they're just letting that voicemail pick it up so that can be really challenging and of course if you're calling on a cell phone and they don't recognize your number that may be one of the reasons why they're picking not picking up as well too so that's where a referral can really help and really pay off uh, with that now if you've got a phone number of their business and you're trying to get to them that way uh, one of the big biggest challenge that we face is what's called the gatekeeper. That individual who is screening calls, that's their sole role and responsibility to screen calls for people. And it may not even be that that person doesn't want to talk to you. Uh, it's just that your name is not recognizable to the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper doesn't know anything about you. So I'd always recommend, uh, surprisingly, focusing a little bit on the gatekeeper and finding out, um, trying to uh, find out a little bit about them and who they are and uh, find out if uh, they are a longtime associate with that person, if they've uh, been working with that person for quite some time. Uh, that may be just what they feel is their role is to keep uh, solicitors and people that they perceive to be uh, someone like you away from their their boss and so that can be that can always be quite challenging uh, I like to get to know that gatekeeper a little bit I ask them how long have you been working at the the company uh, tell me a little bit about you if they're willing to uh, get to get, be that open with you you. Uh, but I'm always nice to the gatekeeper. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that uh, they focus in on the individual person that they're trying to get the appointment with and forget that that gatekeeper is very, very important. So be nice, be kind to that person. Explain to them who you are, you, your organization, why it is that you're trying to get an appointment or trying to, to talk with their boss. So it's really important that you do that. If uh, you do have that referral and you are using the name of someone else, uh, that always helps when trying to get past the gatekeeper as well, too. And so that uh, just knowing a little bit more about you, that you're not just someone who is trying to get money from their boss, then uh, it getting to know that gatekeeper is always very, very important. So those are the things I'd recommend to you, Kurt. I hope that helps. Well, our next question comes from Steve in San Bernardino, California. Steve says, how best can I appreciate my donors? Well, Steve, I just did a video a couple weeks ago on the topic of how to thank your donors. And I believe that thanking donors is just truly a lost art. There are just so many opportunities that we have to thank our partners and we don't always take that we've uh, we focus too much 
these days on high tech and we've lost the art of high touch and I believe that it's just so important to get to know your donors better to uh, understand what would make for the best gift what do they see as important as value uh, how how do they like to be appreciated that could be something as simple as writing a thank you note my wife and I write a lot of thank you notes to our donors and they seem to really value that we'll write a thank you note just out of the blue at least twice a year and then uh, after every special gift, major gift that someone gives, we always write a thank you. Uh, if someone's giving monthly, we wouldn't write them a thank you every month, but we would, uh, especially if they gave a special a gift at year end, we would definitely send a thank you to that person at year end. I also like to make sure that I'm recognizing people with special gifts, special opportunities. I had a good friend that, uh, really helped me in the area of development when I was starting out 36 years ago. And um, that person used to have quite a reputation with his donors for bringing gifts. And uh, he found a very, very unique jam store that uh, people in the community really enjoyed. And he would, at Christmas time, he would buy up the supply because that supply would go quickly. In fact, uh, that there would be a line uh, the first day at that jam store and within a few days their supply would be out for the holiday season. So he would go there and buy up as many as he could that first uh, t opportunity that was out there and he would just go from uh, people's offices to their homes and just deliver jam. In fact, he used to tell me that the um, the secretaries and the, uh, the receptionists at many of his uh, places we would drop off would would begin to call him the Jam Man because he was bringing uh, so many of those great gifts to uh, the, his uh, his donors and things, and they got to enjoy him and like him, and even ask when's the Jam Man coming back next. So, but there's just so many ways. Um, I. I over the years, I, I, I've found that one of the, the best ways to appreciate your, your donors is to recognize uh, birthdays, anniversaries. Uh, I will oftentimes, whether on Facebook or send a text, uh, I'll make sure that I take um, great care in, in wishing a happy birthday to all of our donors as much as I possibly can, the ones that I know. I'll reach out to our donors with very uh, special mailings over the year asking for some of that information. Can I have your birthday? Can I have your anniversary? Can I have the birthday to your kids? And I've even gotten to the point, you can't do this with everybody, uh, all your the kids of your donors, but I've sent a lot of birthday cards to the, the donors of our kids. When our kids were very young, we used to have them write Valentine cards to the kids of our donors, and they wouldn't necessarily even know those kids or know them well, but uh, just sending a Valentine, and I can't tell you how often the parents appreciate that. I've got a few stories out there that I put on that video talking about um, uh, giving candy at Valentine's Day, talking uh, and leaving the message I'm sweet on you. Thank you for the gift of your your gift to our organization. I've also got a great story out there by Josh McDowell, and you'll find that uh, there's a really creative way author and speaker Josh McDowell does to appreciate and thank his donors is out there in the video, so I'd recommend looking at that. But what I would say is uh, people like to have personal attention. They like to be uh, viewed not just as one of the masses, but uh, they like to be viewed special and different. And so just look for creative ways. If you know someone is uh, into quilting, send them an article, a magazine on quilting when you saw it. If you know that someone is in the oil industry, make sure you send them an article, something about something that's a latest occurrence is coming in. Just those little 
just those little touch points, those little messages to say, I'm thinking about you, I appreciate you, and thank you, you, you are valued to, to me and our organization. Just those kinds of things are important. Well, I hope that uh, helped you uh, and Steve and San Bernardino. That was, um, that was just a few suggestions for you. That ends our episode of Jim and Java for this week. Make sure that you submit your questions on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Always willing to answer your questions. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel. It's uh, very uh, important to us and uh, know that the, the goal of this this channel is to help you increase income and to help see you become fully funded. So until next week in our episode of Jim and Java, it's great seeing you. We'll see you again next week.